it's rare to find any work of art that was birthed full formed from the artist's imagination. Even Hayao Miyazaki is no stranger to this. Totoro is a variation on the pandas from a movie Miyazaki worked on years before, and the robot from Castle in the Sky is taken straight from an episode of Lupin the Third. Neon Genesis Evangelion is no exception, so here are eight things Evangelion stole from other mecha series. Number one, biological mecha. Now you may look at the Evas and think, man, what an interesting idea, but that basic idea had been done before in Aura Battler Dunbean, an anime series from Yoshiyuki Tomino, the creator of Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, in this, the main character is transported to a fantasy world where people pilot these large insectoid mecha, but they are technically biological mecha, and it was the first anime series to do that. And since Anno is a big fan of Tomino and has seen a bunch of his works, it's fair to assume that's one of the places he got that idea. Number two, intense psychological scenes. And this is probably a casualty of a lot of anime fans not watching stuff much older than Evangelion. But things like Ghost in the Shell had already been doing this in the Ghost in the Shell movie. It is a very intensely psychological anime series with, or anime movie where there are just long scenes of characters thinking and talking through stuff and working their way through some psychological stuff. So uh, yeah, not original to Evangelion either. Number three, intense war room scenes. So this is something that does feel distinct about Evangelion and Evangelion does take a an approach to it that's a little different from, from a lot of other mecha series, but when you look at it, it feels very much like sequences from the Godzilla movies. Now, not Godzilla ramping across the countryside, but you typically, in those movies, will see scenes of Japanese government officials sitting around a table trying to figure out what to do about Godzilla and ordering a, a strike by tanks or whatever, and of course that fails, and they try the, the electrical wires, and that fails. Um, but that approach to dealing with the bad guys, where there is a remote set of officials all working about it and kind of yelling back and forth and hearing status reports, feels very much uh, like the way that the Godzilla series were structured. Number four, the jerk father figure. Now, Eva certainly takes this to new heights, but it was far from the first anime series to do this. Amuro Ray's father, Tem Ray, in original Gundam is very much an absent father figure who doesn't really understand his son uh, and is kind of a jerk to him. Um, and indeed, we even see that evolved um, uh, later on in the series. So um, while Gendo is certainly a, a very amped up negative father figure, certainly wasn't the first. Number five, a depressing tone. Uh, again, I think a lot of folks watch anime from the 80s and 90s and assume that they're all Ranma and half, that they're all goofy comedies, but there are plenty of anime series from the period that were really dark and depressing, and two particularly come to mind. Um, the second Gundam series, Zeta Gundam, from the early 80s, has a very dark, depressing tone all the way through. And this is the thing. You have other anime series with depressing moments or depressing scenes, but Zeta feels depressing. It feels dark. It feels foreboding and, like, doom pretty much all the way through that series. There are light moments, of course, but then there are light moments in Evangelion. And you can really feel that there. Similarly, Space Runaway Ideon, an anime series from the very early 80s that Tomino, the creator of Gundam, also worked on, has a similar dark tone all the way through, leading up to the, the ending. Um, it is about humans on the run from aliens that are trying to kill them, basically. Uh, and there is this sense of just, you know, we cannot get away from these aliens. We cannot ever win and the aliens do kill off a lot of humans over the course of the series so it is a very dark thing and Anno is has definitely said that that was an inspiration number six the spunky pilot girl Asuka is a fan favorite quite understandably um, but she is far from the first of that kind of a character and for that actually I would go back to Space Runaway Ideon again um, the main character there has a another uh, girl pilot character who pilots along with him in the multi-stage mecha in Ideon. And she's very much a spunky girl who is very, very tsundere with the main character, um, you know, says how much of an idiot he is, but then also clearly has 
a thing for him on, at some level. Their relationship is very Shinji Asuka. Number seven, the downer ending. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens at the end of Evangelion, but I don't think it's a spoiler to say that the ending of Evangelion is not light and happy. Um, and again, this is not the first anime series to do this. And I'm going to go back again to Zeta and Ideon. Um, Zeta has one of the darkest endings in anime. Um, and Ideon, Ideon, the TV series at least, has, I think, the highest body count of any anime I've ever seen. So, yeah, the, the downer ending is um, a thing that had been happening in Mecha for a while. Number eight, a confusing ending to the TV series, followed by two movies that remake the... TV series, and then completely reanimate the ending for the final movie. Yes, that's right. That pattern had been done before in Space Runaway Ideon. The TV series of Ideon comes to a what is supposed to be an apocalyptic ending and then makes this hard left turn at the very last minute, uh, which enraged and frustrated fans. And then they made two movies. The first one more or less retells the story of the TV series, and the second one reanimates the ending to be big and apocalyptic and, and crazy, just like the pattern Evangelion followed with the TV series, Death and Rebirth, and the end of Evangelion. Now again, Anno has said that Ideon was one of his main inspirations for Evangelion, and so you can see why. Now, I'm not complaining here, and I'm not, I'm not trying to drag down Evangelion. I made this primarily because a lot of people seem to think that Evangelion is an extremely original anime series. And what I'm saying is, it's not original, it does what all great art does. It pulls in material from multiple sources in a fresh way that comes together in an interesting way. It is doing the right thing, it's just not particularly original. But again, that, that's, that's fine. Please don't hurt me.